Hello everyone, it's Red Effect, and today we are comparing two heavy tanks of World War II, Tiger II and IS-2, but I won't be going much into their development, I will mainly focus on their statistics and performance in the war. And just a note, this is IS-2, and this is IS-122, also known as IS-2 early model, since it was renamed to IS-2 later in the war but both the Germans and Soviets addressed it as IS-122 in the documents. I will use IS-2 for comparison, not IS-122. Is that clear? Yeah? Okay, so let's start. First we are going to take a look at their firepower. Tiger II was armed with KV Key 43 L71 88mm main gun. It could fire armor-piercing capped ballistic cap high explosive Panzer Granate 3943 shell with muzzle velocity of 1000 meters per second with around 220 mm penetration at 500 meters. It could also fire armor-piercing composite rigid Panzer Granate 4043 with muzzle velocity of 1130 meters per second and 250 mm penetration at 500 meters. It could also fire heat with 90mm penetration and standard high explosive shell. But the biggest issue is that production of APCR or Panzer Granate 4043 was stopped in 1943 because of the lack of tungsten. So when Tiger II went into service in 1944, the number of those shells was very limited and almost non existent in 1945. The main gun sight was TZF-9D, with 2.5 times magnification with 25 degrees field of view, which could be zoomed to 5 times with 14 degrees field of view. The sight, as all German main gun sights of World War II, had coincidental rangefinder in form of triangles on which gunner was trained to estimate the range to the tank targets. But in heat of combat it was not very useful since it required some time and focus to be used correctly. The rate of fire of the main gun was around 5 to 8 rounds per minute. IS-2 was armed with D25T 122mm main gun that could fire armor-piercing high explosive BR-471 with around 800m per second muzzle velocity and around 170mm penetration at 500m and it could also fire standard OF-417 high explosive shell. The main gun sight was Tushu-17 with standard 4 times magnification and 16 degrees field of view. As TAZF-9D, Tushu-17 also had similar coincidental rangefinder in form of triangles. The rate of fire was around 2 to 4 rounds per minute. As for MGs, Tiger II had two MG-34 machine guns and IS-2 had three DT machine guns, one of which was on the rear of the turret. And later, 12.7mm anti-aircraft Dishka MG as standard. From the previous, it's normal to conclude that Tiger II had better armament, better penetration, better optics, better rate of fire. But although BR-471 AP travelled just 77% of the Tigers II Panzer Granate 39, it produced 1.5 times more muzzle energy, and even if it didn't penetrate armour, it would completely crush it, since it produced massive energy. On firing trials on the captured Tiger tank, it penetrated the frontal armour of the turret and completely dislocated it. The lower glazes was completely ripped off, I will provide some links in the description from various firing trials of D25T. If you are interested, you can check them out. Now, another thing one might argue about is that Tiger II must have had more accurate gun. But the truth is different. On trials, it was concluded that D25T is more accurate or as accurate as Tiger II. I will provide the link in the description so you can read more on that. Another thing that should be mentioned are high explosive shells. Target 2 had a rather modest high explosive capability. It was standard high explosive shell designated to engage soft vehicles and infantry. But IS-2 was equipped with extremely powerful high explosive shell. 
It was able to destroy pillboxes and various fortifications. It was also used as anti-tank shell, since the explosion was massive. It would create spalling effects on German tanks, similar to the one of more modern high-explosive squash had, completely knocking out enemy tanks. More on that later when we get to the armor. In Berlin, high explosive was very useful at clearing houses, since it would either kill everyone inside or completely demolish a house. Now, let's take a look at mobility. Tiger II weighted 70 tons and had the Maybach HL 230 P30 12 cylinder gasoline engine with 700 horsepower, giving it power to weight ratio of 10 horsepower per ton, a maximum speed of 40 km per hour. The range of the tank was around 170 km on road and 120 km cross country. It had fording capability at 1.8 meters and could climb at 35 degrees. IS-2 weighted 46 tons and had V2 IS 12-cylinder diesel engine with 600 horsepower, giving it power to weight ratio of 13 horsepower per ton and maximum speed of 38 km per hour. The range of the tank was around 150 km and with external fuel tanks, which were mostly equipped as standard, had around 230 km range. It had fording capability of 1.3 meters and could climb at 36 degrees. It is worth noting that Tiger II had a lot of issues with its weight. Dry terrain was under strength, the double radius steering gear was stressed, and the seals and gaskets were prone to leaks, and had a lot of reliability issues. It is time to look at the armor protection of the two. Tiger II had 180mm at turret front, 150 rounded gun mantlet, 150 frontal glazes, 100mm lower glazes and 80mm side and rear of both hull and turret. The turret was angled at just 10 degrees, where frontal glazes was angled at 50 degrees, which made effective thickness over 200mm. The turret had decent design, where front was made as small as possible with mantlet covering most of it, and side armor would be angled so that hits were most likely to impact it from front and bounce because of steep angle. The design of the mantlet would also divert the shots away from the turret, and the armor behind mantlet was very thick. In case shell does impact it, it would have hard time going through it, and at the time no allied gun could really penetrate it at normal engagement ranges. IS-2 had 100mm of armor on turret front, 100mm gun mantlet, 120mm frontal glazes, 120mm lower glazes, side armor ranging from 130 to 90mm, and rear armor at 60mm. The turret had spherical shape, which was most common in Soviet practice. It means that, unless hit directly at the middle, it should bounce most of the shots. Also, gun mantlet completely covered the left side of the turret, where the gunner is placed, making it 200mm of sphere-shaped armor. The frontal glazes was angled at 60 degrees, which is supposed to double the armor thickness and drastically improve chances to ricochet, making the armor around 240mm equivalent. The turret side and rear were also the 90-200mm thick, and angled at 12 to 35 degrees. Lower glazes was considered a weak spot, since although being the same thickness as upper glazes, it was angled at just 30 degrees, offering protection up to Tiger 1, so ability to wear tracks as armor was added, so it made the lower glazes more resistant. Now, there are some issues with Tiger 2's armor. Since it was produced late in the war, when Allied bombing destroyed a lot of production facilities, steel quality decreased. Germans had to mix materials and had trouble with correct cooling processes, which led to steel being more brittle and easier to shatter, which increased spalling effects and decreased the overall effectiveness. On trials on captured Tiger II, 
I too managed to penetrate the frontal glacis at 600 meters, which in theory it couldn't. And HE made enough spalling to kill some of the crew and damage a lot of inner components. And couple of shots to upper glacis made it completely shatter. So although I too in theory couldn't defeat Tiger 2, in practice it was more than effective in doing so. IS-2 crews even started using that information where two IS-2 tanks would focus on one Tiger 2, where they would fire each one shot which would lead to Tiger 2's front breaking or being penetrated, which guaranteed the destruction of the German tank. Now, let's look at the crew. Tiger 2 had five crew members, commander, gunner, loader, driver and radio or both machine gunner operator. Crew went through long and hard training where they would focus on achieving surprise and executing decisions quickly. They would also get to know their vehicle and learn to work as real comrades and develop mutual trust and respect with other tank crews. They trained on small arms, which of their equipment there would be at least one MP40 submachine gun in the tank and P38 or P08 pistols. IS-2 crew consisted of four members, commander, gunner, loader and driver. The radio operating duty was transferred to commander and driver was alone in forward hull, similar to all later designs. Crew consisted of two officers, driver and commander, and two sergeants, gunner and loader. That ensured that crew would be well disciplined and not stroll away from their assigned duties. Officers would first need to finish tank academy and then go on to 8 to 12 months training. Sergeants would instead of that long training go on 3 months training joining the training with their assigned officers where they would practice firing, loading, radio procedures, taking care of their vehicle and so on. Which is not how Tiger 2 crew trained, all members trained together from start to finish. Crew was equipped with Nagant or TT-33 pistols and F1 frag grenades and flare guns. Also, IS-2 machine guns were placed with easy removal in mind, so they can quickly be stripped off and used if crew had to fight outside of the tank. Just to avoid confusion, most of the crew was trained in 1943, so they were properly trained by the time IS-2 reached service in 1944. Now, in combat, IS-2 proved really well. In most, if not all, I mean in all I could find, engagements between IS-2 and Target 2, IS-2 came out victorious. For example, in the fighting on August 12th to 13th, Senior Lieutenant Klimenko's IS-2 destroyed two Tiger IIs. Another IS-2 from his regiment destroyed three Tiger IIs and another IS-2 destroyed one Tiger II. It is in the battle where famous Alexander Oskin destroyed three Tiger IIs with T-34-85. Soviets suffered no casualties at all. In another engagement, 11 IS-2s repelled the attack of 14 Tiger IIs with three IS-2s being lost. Also, a single unit of 10 IS-2 tanks claimed 41 kills of Tiger tanks and Ferdinand self-propelled guns between April and May of 1944, losing 8 tanks. IS-2 had one big disadvantage, the loading. Since shells were separated in two pieces because of their weight, it made loading twice longer than any Tiger IIs. And it produced a lot of smoke when firing, which made it easier to give away its position, so missing wasn't really an option. Although IS-2 proved impenetrable by German 75 and 88mm guns at normal engagement ranges, most IS-2s fell victim to handheld launchers such as Panzerfaust or Panzerschreck. Since infantry used concealment and ambush tactics to target weak side armor of the tanks, so IS-2 crews started putting metal screens or skirts which weren't extremely effective, but it was better than nothing, and if nothing else, helped boost morale. So at the end, IS-2 comes out victorious. Tiger II wasn't really bad on paper, but because of its weight, it suffered a lot of reliability issues. Armor was of poor quality and it was very big, 
which meant it was easy to spot and hit. But the armament was pretty decent, and the overall design of the armor is not bad, especially the one on the turret. Ice 2 on the other hand proved to be very effective, especially at taking out enemy tanks and fortifications. Even Heinz Guderian advised Panzer units to avoid IS-2 and only engage it if they got tactical and numerical advantage. The tank continued service after the war. Even new variant, the IS-2M, was introduced and the tank saw action in Korean War and other minor engagements. That is it, thanks for watching. If you think I made a mistake somewhere, feel free to correct me in the comment section down below. As always, Sources are in the description. Check out my Discord channel if you have some questions or just want to chat. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day. The IS-2, I would argue, is a successful tank. But once again, it's not a tank versus tank tank. Everybody thinks of the IS-2 as something that's being built to go and fight the Tiger or fight the Panther or that sort of thing. It's not. It's in the breakthrough regiments. It's, it's a breakthrough tank. Um, it's supposed to be firing high explosive and blasting the hell out of German infantry. It's not out there to shoot at other tanks. And I think in the role that it was intended for as a breakthrough tank, it was very successful. By that stage of the war, the Red Army is on the offensive. And where you see the IS-2 very effectively is in the summer 1944, starting with Bagration in, against Army Group Center, and then, of course, in the later campaigns up in East Prussia and then into Germany itself. Thank you.